Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I thought I'd round up everything we know about that will be coming in Season 6 of Battlefield 2042. All the little tidbits that have been mentioned over the past weeks and months that you might have missed. I also want to touch on the Easter egg developments that have been happening recently, since there's quite a lot that have been added since last time I spoke about them. And then we're going to take a look at what's on offer this week for Redux. But before we begin, as always, if you guys do enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also swing by the Twitch channel if you guys enjoy watching streams. I've been streaming three times a week for the past two or three weeks now, so it would always be a joy to see some of you guys there. And as always, thank you for the support. So Redux is drawing to an end soon, which I'm very happy about, to be honest with you. Nothing against old game modes coming back, but I think we can all agree that it's high tide we had a new season, and the past few weeks have really been dragging on a bit. However, towards the end of Redux now, we actually have some of the better game modes, in my opinion, coming out. So this week we see the return of the Season 4 game mode Shutdown. If you recall, that's the 8v8 mode where you have to plant this new objective item called the Lance and then you score as many points with it as you can. Although strangely enough, I could have sworn that DICE said they would be increasing the player size of this game mode to make it 12v12. So maybe I'm wrong about that and I misheard it and it is going to be 8v8. But that's, you know, if memory serves, that's what they said. Now to go alongside this game mode, we have a new 100 128 player conquest playlist called New Dawn and I don't want to be a party pooper here but I really don't like these conquest playlists that DICE have been putting in here and this week is no exception. So this playlist has two maps, one of them is Reclaimed which I do think is a good map but it is a 64 player map, it can't be played on 128 players and the other map is Hourglass which definitely saw some improvement after its rework but it is still one of the worst maps in the game, at least for me. So, you know, if you want to play some 128 player Conquest this week, all you can do is play Hourglass. That's it. I don't really get it, if I'm honest. It's basically limiting the amount of maps you can play in 128 player mode by masquerading it as content. And I would prefer to just see the regular 128 player playlist there with all of the maps in it. Same thing for Breakthrough here as well. You've only got Reclaimed and Hourglass. And then for Portal, we have TDM of Ages and Gunmaster of Ages. Now, moving on to Easter eggs, there is a new Timeless player card that you guys can get on Reclaimed. Now, this is probably only a limited time thing, so if you want it, I suggest getting it now. So all you have to do is hop into a game on Reclaimed, probably best to do this in Portal. You will find an interactable radio by the entrance to E1. Interact with that, and then you need to find three black skulls that have been graffitied on the wall. You interact with them in the correct order, and then you go back to the radio. So the first skull is inside the bunker at D1. The second is on this north shipping container, Dice's favorite, of course. And the third one is on a graffiti wall close to E1. And then you just interact with the radio again, and you'll have your player card nice and easy. Of course, we've already seen this player card before since it was data mined some time ago, but it seems to depict the fake sky of the facility we'll most likely get to play on when season six arrives. Now, a few days ago, you guys may have seen a video from me or another content creator about these missing in action posters that appeared in the game. They led us to a website with an image which gave us the coordinates to what is likely the location of the season six map, Bore, an island off the coast of Scotland. However, since then, DICE have been hiding more and more images that actually fit together with this image like a jigsaw to form a map. One of them was hidden on the splash screen when you log into the game, another was posted on the Battlefield Discord by a user named Pike, and now a new tab on the website has revealed another one. So this is what we have so far when you stitch the map fragments together. Obviously that new one has to come down in the bottom right corner there. A lot of this stuff is covered up by the classified mark and lots of the writing has been blocked out here, but I know the Battlefield Easter Egg community have been hard at work trying to crack this. DICE then just today tweeted out a new Archangel Archives report with only the words contain biological and spy visible in the first paragraph and execute on site in the second, along with another fragment of the map. Meanwhile, over on Hourglass, the Easter egg hunting community have discovered this strange sound like somebody banging on a pipe. Oh, 
Now at the moment, people think this is tap code, and according to Wikipedia, it has been commonly used by prisoners to communicate with each other, usually by tapping either the metal bars, pipes, or walls inside a cell. And since Season 6 is all about no pack prisoners and experiments, that makes a lot of sense. And the plot thickens here because this interactable box has also been found on the back of a trailer on the same map. I believe this is all on Hourglass, and it has some very strange markings on it. Now, nobody has any idea what it means or what it does, but they're working on it right now as I'm editing this video, and I'm sure they'll crack it soon enough. So keep an eye out, guys. Keep an eye on the Battlefield Easter Egg Twitter account, or the X account, rather. I really have to get used to saying that, I guess. Uh, there'll probably be another Easter Egg unlock very soon, and when there is... I will make a little guide for it here for you guys on the channel. So, moving on here, we already know that Season 6 will have a new map, new weapons and gadgets, a new game mode, and a new vehicle. What any of those are is, as of yet, a complete mystery, with us probably knowing more about the map than anything else, really. I have speculated that the new vehicle may be an attack jet, but that is purely based on the fact that we haven't had a new jet in the game yet, and also that they've been bumping up the jet count for all of the maps I also speculated that it could be a boat, since uh, this island of Bore is surrounded by other islands around there, and maybe we're going to see a map similar to Parasol Storm, where you kind of need boats to get between, but I think the likelihood of that is, is very slim. But I also wanted to go over some of the not-so-obvious things that also look like they'll be coming in Season 6 that we've seen DICE personnel comment on over the past weeks and months. So firstly there will be some significant changes to the engineer class. A while back, you may recall DICE reworked the attack helicopter and actually nerfed the engineer launcher slightly. A lot of people weren't very happy about that, but community manager Kevin Johnson did assure us that there are some pretty big changes coming to two of the engineer specialists. Now, I can only assume that those two then are going to be Crawford and Boris, since they seem to be the worst of the bunch. What those changes will be remains to be seen. It could be some big changes to the launchers like the M5 and the RPG, maybe some increases in ammo capacity, or it could be changes to the specialists themselves, more along the lines of improvements to Boris's sentry turret and Crawford's stationary minigun. There are also some changes coming to the railgun tank. Again, we don't really know the details here, but vehicle designer Armored Kill, again over on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, he's mentioned this before. So I think they know the railgun tank is a problem. I don't think the fact that it's a vehicle killer is necessarily the problem but rather its ability to camp in spawn completely safe from harm whilst one-shotting vehicles across the map. Those of you who follow me over on Twitter will know we've been having a bit of a discussion over this over the past couple of days, and I really think that's where the problems with this vehicle lie. I mean, call me crazy, but being able to one-shot vehicles across the map from your spawn does not really seem fair or balanced. So if it was me, I would primarily be looking into its ability to camp in the spawn, you know, try and get them out of the spawn. And the same goes for the Wildcat, really, because that's been a problem. The Wildcat just isn't as much of an issue because, obviously, the further you are from your target, the more fall-off you have and the less damage you're going to do. But that is actually the opposite to the Railgun Tank. The further the Railgun Tank is away from its target, the easier it actually is to aim because you have to make less of an adjustment whilst you're charging your shot the further away that target is, if that makes sense. Now, you guys may also remember that the Hovercraft recently saw some big changes to its speed and handling. Its maneuverability, really, on the whole, had a big rework. And DICE have told us that that was a test for the rest of the ground vehicles, essentially. So, similar to how we saw them change the handling of the helicopters and the jets in the last update, in Season 6, you can expect to see a similar overhaul for the ground vehicles. Again, no details here as to exactly what they're going to change, but I think tanks could use a bit of love in this game. I'd like to see them be more viable as a flag assaulting vehicle rather than one that is pushed into camping in the back and spamming heat shells instead. In addition to that, he also mentioned that they are looking to make some improvements to vehicle UI or the heads up display, whether or not that means a hip or a predicted impact point for the rockets on helicopters and jets, gunner seat positionings, pilot view direction, and all of that good stuff that we had in the previous games. I don't really know, but 
we can only hope. So it's a shame I can't give you guys any solid details on what's coming, but these areas of the game are being looked at, and I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what improvements DICE have for us there. I can't promise you these changes are all going to come right at the start of Season 6, that is to say, Update 6.0, but if they don't all come, then you can probably expect to see the rest of them in 6.1 or 6.2 or some of the subsequent patches. Really, I just can't wait for Season 6 to get here. I think this is now going to be the last week of Redux. So after this week, we have next week, which is most likely going to be spent promoting Season 6. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some capture events with some influencers and that type of thing, some trailers and all of that good stuff. And then the week after that, hopefully on the 10th of October, we are actually going to get Season 6 in our hands. So if you did uninstall when Redux came along, it might be time to reinstall again, guys. I will, of course, be covering everything about that here on the channel, so subscribe if you're new. Leave your comments below, as always, guys. A special thanks to my members for their additional support, and a thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.